Hello everyone, I'm Ken, and I'm very happy to announce the first Computer Clan demo video ever. And today we're going to be kicking it off with a brand new product, the Macintosh Plus. Now, for those that have used personal computers before, this is probably something you have never seen before, and it's, it's quite impressive, like I hardly can understand how this works. So the whole computer is just in this little box here. There's not like a separate system with a separate monitor. It's an all-in-one, very easy to move around solution. And it has two input devices. You have a keyboard like you would typically see, but the cool thing is it is on a, a cord so you can pull it out. You can put it in your lap here if you want to type down here. It's not attached to the system in any way. You can just pull it out kind of like, kind of like a, you know, a telephone. And there's a new type of device called the mouse. Uh, some people call this the pointing device. And this lets you interact with the computer in a way that you've probably never seen before. So we'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> so the computer here uses three and a half inch diskettes to store information. Uh, you've probably seen those five and a quarters. These are a lot more compact and they can store a lot more data than those, which is really fascinating as well. And you just put them in right here. And uh, the computer is also capable of loading diskettes off of external floppy disk drives, so if you want to have more disks show up on the computer at the same time, you can mount them that way. So I'm just going to turn it on here using the switch in the back. You'll hear a little chime. So when the computer is warmed up here, it will give us a little icon here, and what you'll see is we'll actually have a little picture of a diskette. This isn't some kind of command line interface or DOS terminal. It actually communicates with us using pictures which is really really great too. This is the graphical user interface. So I'll put the disk in and you'll see it'll give us a little smiley face here and then the computer will start loading up the system software. So what we have here is called the desktop. The system uses metaphorical representations of what we use in our everyday lives. So think of like an office desk. This is your office desk in the computer. And going back to the mouse, this is what I was talking about before. When you move the device around on your desk, you move a little arrow or cursor on your screen. And this is what lets you interact with the system. So if I hover the cursor over an item on the desktop, I can then click and interact with the item. So if I double click this icon here, it opens it up. And then it gives me more items, stuff that you would see typically on your desk, like a file folder, you know, a piece of paper inside of what we call a window. A window is what contains all of these icons. And the window can be moved around. I can just click, hold, and drag on the mouse, move it, and the window pops up in a different place. The whole system is interactive on this way that you haven't seen in a personal computer before. So, what I can also do, I was talking about external floppy disk drives earlier, we can actually put in a diskette to load up other software applications. So I can pop this in, and you'll see the desktop. This is being run with a program called the Finder, by the way. It helps you find your files. Um, again, using that metaphor, files. Uh, we got a new uh, program that popped up here in this window. This is Microsoft Word. So if you've ever done word processing on a personal computer before, this will be uh, pretty revolutionary. It's impressive what this uh, one-bit screen can do. So just double-click that icon, and what it does is it loads up this program off the floppy disk. Another thing you may notice is how quiet the computer is. There's no spinning disks inside of it. There's no fans. It is completely silent. It only makes noise when the floppy disk drive is being operated. So now I have a new window here. And this is also a good time to talk about what's on top here. This is called the menu bar. And if I click and hold the mouse over these words, file, edit, format, font, you can see pull-down menus that come down here, and I can interact with them by highlighting certain options like this. So we'll get into more of that in just a sec. I'm just going to type some things here like I would in a typical word processing application. I will just say, um, the duck swims on the lake, and, uh, the duck may swim on the lake, but my daddy owns the lake. So typically, this type of text would be referred to as a plain text format. 
It's just text information. There's nothing fancy about it. There's nothing graphical. But what we can do with a program like Microsoft Word and a graphical, graphical user interface is change it up a bit. So let's say you can see my cursor turned into a typing bar here. This lets me interact with the type. So I can click, hold, and drag and highlight this. So when the text is highlighted, anything that I select from the menu bar will be applied to it. So if I went to the font pull-down menu and went down to 24-point font, you'll see instantly the text will get bigger. I didn't have to do anything else, and it worked really quickly. I can also format this type. Let's say I wanted to outline it. It's now outlined. And let's say I made a mistake and I want to undo that. I can say undo formatting, and it remembers what I just did, and it reverts it. So let's say I wanted to emphasize owns. My daddy owns the lake. I could do italic. So I can just double click on that, highlight owns, go to format, and hit italic. And now we have mixed formats. We have our regular 24 point font with italics mixed in there as well. I can also do other mixed formats here by using the mouse again, click, hold, and drag, go to my format menu, underline, I can go here, highlight this, font, make that smaller, 14. I can even change what type of font, uh, typeface this is. For example, I can do Chicago. As you can see, the text now has a different appearance to it. I can change this typeface as well. Let's say I want Helvetica. Now it has a Helvetica typeface, or maybe uh, Times. So as you can see, I'm working with a bunch of different formats of text all inside one document here. Another cool thing about the Macintosh is its level of multitasking capability. So let's say I'm working on this document, but maybe I need a, a, you know, a calculator to do something. In the Apple menu here, I can get what are called desk accessories. So I can go to a calculator, and then up pops a calculator here. And as you can see, it just floats above this window here, and I can move it wherever I want on the desktop. And I can click the numbers if I want to do math, 8 times 8, you know, 64. Um, or I could use the numeric keypad on the keyboard. I can clear that out and do like, you know, 89 times 5, you know, 445. So I can interact with it again with either the mouse or the keyboard. And that is my desk accessory. So let's say I am done with this. The file menu lets me choose what I want to do with files. Saving them into the file system, quitting applications. So I'll just quit here. And uh, <clears throat> I'll just say, no, I don't want to save changes here. So then when, when you're done with an application, it brings you back to the Finder and your typical desktop. And the last thing I want to show is just like the ease of use of how you can actually customize the system. As soon as my like, allergies don't kill me. <laughs> So the next thing I want to show is how easy it is to customize the system here. You don't have to use command lines or anything like that. You just use an application called the control panel. And the control panel lets you change certain types of settings all with your mouse. So for example, I can change my desktop pattern just from here. And uh, <laughs> there's right protection on the disk, so I couldn't do that. We're just going to... Oh, it did it anyway. I obviously don't know how to use this thing. Um, <laughs> whatever, we have a volume control here. I can change my mouse speed, keyboard settings, sound effects, all without having to type in a single command. It's all done just from this interface. So let me change that uh, desktop pattern here. There, that looks snazzy. There, beautiful, looks like graph paper. Okay, so that is a quick look at the Finder Macintosh system software, the Macintosh Plus, and Microsoft Word. When you are done, you can safely shut down the computer just by using the special menu. You just simply click shut down, and your disks will automatically eject and then it says it is now safe to switch off your Mac. Just flip down the switch.
on the back. So thank you everyone for tuning into this demo. I think this is a pretty um, awesome sign of where we're going to be going with the future of technology. But in all honesty, it kind of sucks because we have smartphones that are more powerful than these things, so I don't know why these even exist, but but still, you know, multi-touch, bitch. This is, this is where it's at. So, all right, guys, we'll see you later. They exist to make fanboys like you squee. Oh, shush. Are you still rolling on me? Yeah. Hey, this, this pitch is over, old man. I don't have enough light when I point it this way. <laughs> See what it does is it closes the aperture. Oh, and then I, I move it this way and it's like too much. Oh, wait. No, yeah. it's fine. I'm, I'm still filming you. We could, I can tell. We could probably cut the tape. No. I'm, cut! I'm just going to keep filming oh, you. Oh, fine. Keep doing it. See what I care. Oh, it is amazing. Okay, so like what? A megabyte of memory and this is like two gigs? So this is like 2,000 times the amount of RAM. Here's here's the funny thing. Do you think that phone will still work in 30 years? That... Yeah. Do you think that phone will work in 20 years? That's the sad part. I mean, this thing is so old, but it still works. Do you think it's, it'll work in 10 years? It, this phone probably... Well... Nah. The original iPhone is not even 10 years old yet. That's true. The first ten, iPhone. 10 years, probably. Anything after that, but see, you also got to remember batteries are also a thing that really degrade over time, and those. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, no batteries. There's no. There's probably a clock battery in here, but that's it. Too bad you can't take the battery out of that. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Actually, is there even a clock battery in here? I I mean, there is. There is an I alarm don't, clock. I don't app, know. But, I don't yeah. know. Would you trust a Mac Plus to be your alarm clock? No, not really. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and then there's the neglected SE down there that gave us Microsoft Word. Yes, we just jacked it off the hard drive. Uh, yeah. 20 megs, is it? 20 megabyte, yeah. I believe, hard drive, yeah. Wow. That's not even the FD, HDFD model. That's the 800K floppy model. Right. That's the early SE. Oh, and then, and then check this out. First generation iPod, yeah. Electrostatic click wheel, no. Physical mechanical click wheel, you had to spin it. Five gigs. Yep. Still, it was Firewire. It was, still works. Was, yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. And this has a battery in it, you know. Yeah, and it still works. It's been replaced at least once. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, I love my first gen. That's cool. Hey guys, if you want to get some laughs out of us, I recommend Ken Cinema of Shenanigans. Just click here. But I also recommend Crazy Ken's Tech Misadventures. It is chuck full of tech mishaps and some fun times.